Welcome <laughs> to the Simpleton Review, uh, the place for simple reviews from simple people to smart people like you. I'm Nate Simpleton. And I'm Charlie Simpleton. I'm Lemuel Simpleton. And we are the Simpletons, bringing you great reviews of music and movies. And this week we've got music. We are going to be talking about the Viagra Boys. I'm hoping they don't need it, but that's what they call themselves is <laughs> Viagra. They are a Swedish post-punk band from Stockholm, Sweden. Band formed in 2015 with several members from other bands that I'm not going to mention because their names are kind of weird. But their <laughs> musical style is interesting. It's kind of a mix. Like Post-punk, I guess, is probably about the best way to subscribe it. So d No, don't subscribe to it, but describe it. It's fine, right? Yeah, Let it's me all. Like, it's kinda like Charlie. Punk, it's kind of like somebody. Punk, it's kind of like what punk guys do after they're done playing punk. That's what post punk is. Yeah, that's it's right. It's kind of like what kind of music do you pick up? Well, it always has that kind of like punk feel. Right. But it's totally a different kind of music. Yeah. yeah. So they call it post punk, like post millennialism or post. Yeah. yeah. Post, post office. Post Malone. Uh -huh. Let me all. Why don't you tell us what you thought about the Viagra Bull? I didn't realize my shuffle play was on, so oh. I got the shuffle play, and the thing that made me laugh the most was uh, one of the song. They played the song where he's like talking about not needing no woman to keep him down, and then immediately played the song about moving to the country with a woman. And I was like, oh, that's a really funny joke. <laughs> I didn't realize they did it like at the beginning of the album, the end of the album. But. Yeah, well, uh, I think I think to the country. If that's the one I'm thinking of, that is actually a jaw. Uh, um, oh my gosh, I just he just that's it is it's a cover, it. and I can't think. The guy just passed away this past year from COVID, unfortunately. But he is a, he was a big a big shot. John Prine. Oh my gosh, can't think. I could think of his. Yeah, so that's a, actually a John Prine song. That's why it's kind of got that country feel to it. It's a funny song, and that's why, because it's, it's John Prine. <laughs> so if you don't know who John Prine is, go check him out. You will like him. All of a sudden, my video is freaking out, and... <laughs> He's an alien, guys. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Oh. Die. <laughs> Today. All right. Uh, yeah, so Charlie, tell me what you thought of Viagra Boys. Well, there it is. <laughs> Viagra Boys. Uh, yeah, I kind of... I thought it was really funny that they were so anti-everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just doing my stuff. I am doing my crap. Yeah, yeah. This is it. I'm yeah, nice. it. <laughs> what was your favorite song? Best in Show was Best probably my show. favorite. Okay. Yeah. There were some pretty good songs. I really liked the no. first track, Ain't Nice. I thought that was good. It's a good way to get it kicked off. Yeah, yeah. That was. Yeah. I mean, that was a, that was a jamming track. Yeah. Growing up in this kind of music, it was it yeah. was an okay album. I I had a hard time like grooving with it, probably because I'm getting old. And uh, I'm, I'm not mad at everybody anymore. <laughs> so, All right. That's fair. That's like, fair. I don't feel like women have done me wrong necessarily. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, so, oh, I mean, that's a, yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. Lemuel, how did you feel about this album? Did you like it or not? I, I enjoyed it a lot. It was really cool to hear because it felt like each song was a different, slight different type of rock and everything. And the, the musical interlude they had like halfway through the album was really nice. It, Except for, I, I didn't like the end as much to that one, but I liked right. it a lot. <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. Um, I, I thought it was, uh, I, I like the fact, I really felt the influences. Like, you could tell that, I mean, it's, it's called post-punk, but there was definitely, like, some Velvet Underground going on. You could hear some... Yeah, talking. talking oh yeah, <laughs> huge. I that was one of the bands I thought of. I was like, this. There's some major talking heads going on in this. The keyboards and stuff. He's like, wow. I mean, there's some. Yeah, definitely talking heads on there. Uh, and I also really <laughs> liked the saxophone because there's this there's this instrumental band called Moon Hooch. I was like, that is so <laughs> Moon Hooch. The way they're that's, playing that's the saxophone. <laughs> Their last album was what I wanted to do next month. <laughs> Which one, Moon Hooch? <laughs> they released yeah, a new yeah. one. Yeah, it was, uh, I think it released last year. So. Oh, yeah, okay. and you could hear that saxophone sound in these songs. Like there's that slightly off-key type of <laughs> sound to the saxophone when they're playing, and that's a very moon hoochy thing to do, right? I mean, it's just that that punk saxophone, I guess. I don't know <laughs> uh, it's not bad, and I really, <laughs> I did really like the instrumental a song in there. I thought it was it was really well oh, well yeah. done. I I liked it. I had never heard of these guys before, and I was just you know, skimming through to see what music was new and they popped up and I'm like, Viagra boys, ah. I <laughs> scrolled on and then I came back and I'm like, uh, I don't know, it's in the alternative section. Maybe I was at click and I was like, ah, 
yeah, I kind of like it. Let's listen to this one. So, yeah, that's how I came up with it. I'd never heard of him. So, Viagra Boys, you got a new fan. I'm just going to say that. So, <laughs> why don't we go ahead and give our rating, if you guys don't have anything else to say about the band, the album or the band. Okay, let's give our rating then. I'm going to go first. I'm going to give Viagra Boys Welfare Jazz. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's good. It's, it's, it's good enough to to give myself or feel that it's simpleton certified for me 3.5 it's not great it's not the best album ever but it's better than average i uh i'll give it a four i liked it a lot i added it to my main spotify playlist i'd listen to it again i only had a few nitpicky things where i was like i don't know if i really like the outro to the song or whatever but for the most part i enjoyed it nice okay good 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 and charlie what about you mr you don't have any teenage angst anymore (laughs) <laughs> I, gi- I give it a three uh, I'll play, play it once uh, you might yeah. the thing is, is I, I probably only have like the one maybe two songs that I'm going to have on a playlist otherwise it just didn't groove me so right it was well worth a listen okay uh, yeah so. it, v- v- you know unfortunately Viagra Boys does not get our Simpleton certified but ah! it is as Charlie said I think worth a listen if nothing else at least once I think a lot of you guys will groove on it it is fun it's a fun album it's a happy yeah. album there's a lot of stuff like Charlie said or Lemuel said that maybe they hate but it's still <laughs> a fun album you know I mean it's punk right you gotta talk about what you hate that's what punks do unless you're Green Day or something <laughs> or yeah or even uh, MXPX but um uh, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> Viagra Boys, check them out anywhere where music is sold. Because I think Charlie said he actually went and bought these albums. Did you go buy these albums? Look at that. Oh, An actual crap. CD. Right there. Right on. Yeah. Down a- Record Heck exchange. Yeah. Shout out to the record oh, yeah. exchange in Boise, Idaho, one of the best record stores in the world, in my opinion. So, and humble as it may be. All right, let's <laughs> move into the next segment here at Simpleton Review. That is called uh, Pop Culture News. Charlie, let's start with you this time. What do you got for us? Well, speaking of punks, Danny Boyle. Danny, Danny Boyle. Boyle is not a punk, but Danny Boyle is uh, directing a new TV show for FX, okay. which is a bi- uh, <laughs> music biopic of the Sex Pistols. Ooh. And okay. so this is going to be uh, based on uh, um, Jones' memoir. Uh, uh, Steve Jones, guitarist for the Sex Pistols. This mm-hmm. is going to be based off of his notes and everything. And so um, the uh, his memoir is called Lonely Boy T- Tales from a Sex Pistol. And so that's going to start in March. It's going to start on March 7th. And uh, so and it's like, <laughs> I love reading the notes here. It says, imagine breaking into a world of the crown and Downton Abbey with your mates screaming uh, your lungs, singing your songs of fury at all that they represent. And so Danny Boyle said that in a press release, and I thought that was a pretty, pretty uh, good phrase for the for the theme. So, yeah. and uh, well, and if you don't recognize Danny Boyle, he's uh, you know if you've seen Twenty Eight Days, Twenty Eight Weeks Later, uh, those movies, um, Train Spotting. Oh man, this guy is known for tons of movies. So yeah. check him out, look at what he's done, and you'll totally get why I'm excited about this. Yeah, that could be interesting. <laughs> I mean, uh, the Sex Pit. <laughs> There's so much that could be written about this band, and there would still be stuff to write about with the Sex Pistols. You know what I mean? And they weren't <laughs> around for that long. How many albums do they have out? Just like a couple, right? It's not very um, many. Yeah, a lot of it was like EP recordings or singles. Yeah, yeah. So, so you got like two, maybe three right. full albums, and then a whole bunch of singles that they put but, together. Yeah, but their, I mean, their legend just continues. I mean, they're just. Uh, <laughs> they they were the epitome of punk rock music. That I mean, nobody, not even the Ramones, in my opinion, measures up to the punkiness of the Sex Pistols. <laughs> they were punk rock, that's for sure. So, Ramones were just happy punk, honestly. I mean, let's be <laughs> honest, right? The Sex Pistols was like, kill you, kill you two, frick the whole world, blow it up, I'm done, right? And then let's have a cigarette after we're done. That was the Sex Pistols. Am I wrong? No, <laughs> no, that's no. Pretty much it. that was it. <laughs> that was the Sex Pistols. So, uh, yeah, check that out, guys. Uh, w- does it does it have a release date, or we just barely yeah, started? March seventh. March seventh. Sweet. Oh no, no, that's when they're doing the uh, production. Oh, so, okay. Uh, we're probably looking at at least a year from now. Okay, right on. Oh, okay. Right on. Cool. So, Sex Pistols documentary, done by Danny Boyle. Uh, 
my little piece of pop culture news is, uh, you know, I couldn't really find much, but I found, I found this was interesting. So there was this band. This little kid started as a Mouseketeer back in the day, and then he created one of the biggest boy bands in the entire freaking world. In fact, at one point, he had sold, well, his band had sold more albums than any other person or any other group in history. Um, just crazy amount of albums. Uh, his name is Justin Timberlake. He was the lead singer of a little band called NSYNC. He Never turned... 40 years old this week. Ooh. He's getting up there. Yeah, he's That's much old. Younger than we are. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. So, I mean, that makes me feel old right there. JT is 40 years old and it's it's impressive. You know, I honestly think I wasn't I I was never an NSync fan. I could I could do without NSync. I did not like any of their music. Every time I heard the song Bye Bye, I just wanted to say that to them. <laughs> bye bye cuz I couldn't I, I just didn't like it, you know? Um, what made me like Justin Timberlake, I'm gonna be honest, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> That's what made me, every, uh, yeah. Know, like, I just like, this guy's funny. Like he's self deprecating and he's funny. I like him. He's good. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and honestly, actually, after he went solo and some of his more recent albums, I, I actually kind of like him. Uh, I. I haven't, like his album Mirrors, I think it was called. It's actually a pretty good album. I'm going to admit it. That doesn't emasculate me at all. It's a good album. Just saying. All right. Anybody have anything else to say about uh, anything What's we your talked story? about? Oh, have we not talked about you yet, Lemuel? <laughs> no. Oh, ah, well, you're we kind of forgettable. On. All right. I am. Go this ahead, Lemuel. <laughs> oh, darn. All right. Well, um, my story is a little forgettable anyways, probably. There was this game that was announced a little while ago um, that was going to be in the Hogwarts universe, or in the Harry Potter universe. You could go as a student, like hang out at Hogwarts. It was going to be open world RPG um, following the story. I think it was supposed to be before Harry Potter and his friends went to Hogwarts, but I'm not fully certain. It was set to come out later this year, and they've already pushed it back to next year. So... I'm Why? just a little sad about that. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually look too much into it. I was already just depressed at the fact that they were pushing it back. I think but they are just, trying to avoid the cyberpunk debacle. Yeah, that would be my first guess. Because oh, after about the cyberpunk debacle, what happened? Oh, there? dude, it's crazy. <laughs> so they uh, they delayed this game like three or four times already, and um, finally they were like, "Okay, we're gonna just drop this game," and it came out. And it didn't run on consoles at all, really. Especially the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Like, it didn't run. The next-gen consoles, it ran okay, but it was still buggy. PC can be really buggy. So people, like, got mad. Like, PlayStation had to take it off their store. They're getting sued by... Get refunds. Oh, and yeah. It's, oh, uh, yeah. It, it, the bottom line was, the investor said, No, we're tired of the delays. The developers were like, It's not ready yet. And the investors <laughs> were like, get it out we're tired and so they dropped it and the developers are like it's not ready yet and so they had to, and then the investors are the ones suing them anyways mm -hmm. but the real problem should be the because this company has been the one of the like heroes of uh gaming because uh one of the biggest issues is a uh, like right before a game drops they require mandatory overtime for a lot of the workers right and the workers end up living at the studio basically for like right. two or three weeks right it's uh, union it's a huge issue yeah, yeah. so all these it's, video game developers are union and so you've got you know you have to go by union rules and if you if you break them you're in trouble and you know what yep. do you do so but cd project red has been one of the heroes of this uh thing where they don't usually they haven't had their developers have to do that in the past. So everybody's respected them, but they pretty much did it for this game in the end. They had to. So. <laughs> yeah. Whole, uh... Well, uh, hopefully they'll avoid all of that with the Harry Potter game, and it'll be great, and everybody will love it, and uh, maybe it'll kick, like, you know, maybe it'll be better than Call of Duty or uh, <laughs> Counter-Strike. It doesn't matter if it's better than Call of Duty, because Call of Duty's entrenched itself in the culture, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. That's super annoying. I'm so tired well, of it. Well, it is entrenched itself in my house, and it's usually because I hear things getting broken in the next room uh, yeah. over. Things slamming, keyboards go flying, and yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Shh, don't tell him I said my name. All right. So, there you have it. This is your uh, latest edition. <laughs>
This is your latest edition of Simpleton Review. Uh, go check out Viagra Boys. You won't be disappointed. If you like punkish music, especially with a little bit of saxophone in the background, you're going to like Viagra Boys. It is a good album. I gave it a three. Charlie gave it a... Th- no, well, I gave it a 3.5. You gave it a three. And Lemuel gave it a four. He was very generous today. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. I am Nate Simpleton. And I'm Charlie Simpleton. And I'm Lemuel Simpleton. You guys have fun. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.